Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with my next computer build video. So it's been a couple months since I did my last one, and in the meantime I've got a lot of requests to do a really high-end awesome gaming PC. So that's what I'm going to be doing today with a PC that comes in at the $1500 price point. To start our build off with, we'll be using an Intel Core i5 2500K CPU. Now I know you guys are probably all on your keyboards right now saying, Core i5, why not use the Core i7? The major difference between the i5 and the i7 is that the i7 has hyper-threading, which allows Windows to see it as 8 cores as opposed to 4. And while that's great if you do a lot of heavily threaded tasks such as video editing and that kind of stuff, for games, most of the time they struggle to use up 4 cores, so that 8 virtual cores really isn't going to give you a lot of performance benefit. Beyond that, it's very similar to the i7. You're still going to be able to overclock it into the stratosphere, in most cases well over 4 GHz, and it's still going to be an absolutely rock solid CPU for not only gaming, but for just day to day use, it's going to have absolutely tons and tons of power. For about 230 bucks, this is a great way to start our build. Next, we're going to be using a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus CPU cooler. Now the i5 is going to have a cooler just like this, and while this is fine if you're going to be sitting at base clock speeds all day, if you want to do some major overclocking, the Hyper 212 Plus is a great way to go. It dissipates way more heat, and it allows you to get some really high overclocks without catching your CPU on fire. So this one's going to run you about 25 bucks or so, and in my opinion it's going to be well worth it. Next up, we'll be using the Gigabyte GAZ68 UD3 motherboard. This is the same one that I've been using in my computer for almost a year now, and I gotta say it's a great motherboard. Not only does it look awesome, it's got a black PCB, which I love those things, beats the blue and all the kind of ridiculous colors that really don't belong in a gaming case. But on top of that, it's got all the major features that you need. Since it's a Z68 board, that means you're going to be able to overclock your CPU as high as you want. And on top of that, it's got all the major features that you want. So it's got SATA 3, it's got USB 3, and it's built really well. So it's got nice thick boards, not like going to be really be flexing when you get big GPUs in there. So overall, it's a great board for about 155 bucks. Now comes the fun part. For a GPU, we're going to be using the Sapphire Radeon HD7950. Now, as many of you guys know, this is a brand new card from AMD, and it is one of the most powerful single GPU cards that you can buy. The 7950 is a great card, and on top of that, you can actually overclock it. So in some cases, you can actually get it up to the same level of the 7970s. With 3GB of GDDR5 memory, this thing is absolutely going to demolish any game you throw at it, including Battlefield 3 on Ultra. That's pretty much going to be your reaction. Now it is expensive, it's going to run you about $480, so it's by far the most expensive thing in this entire build. However, if you want the absolute best performance you can get without having to go with Crossfire or a dual GPU card, this is going to be the way to go. For memory, we're going to be going with 16GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 RAM. Now this stuff's clocked at 1600MHz, and while I'll be the first to admit, 16GB of RAM is overkill on a gaming machine, you never know when that extra might come in handy. This is the same RAM I have in my computer, however the difference is this has a low profile heatsink. So while mine looks great, it's got a very tall heatsink and it makes it impossible to add a second fan to my Hyper 212 Plus for better CPU cooling. So it's a better idea, if my opinion, to go with this lower profile stuff. It should perform just the same and for about 100 bucks or so, it's going to be a great way to go. Since this is a high-end gaming machine, you got to use an SSD. In this case, we're going to be using a 128GB Samsung 830 drive. Now this is one of my favorites for a couple of reasons. For one, it's reliable. Sure, you can spend a lot more and get an Intel drive, which may be slightly more reliable. However, it's going to be very close and beat a lot of the other SSDs on the market. And on the flip side, you're going to get great performance. Again, maybe not quite as good as some of the Sandforce drives on the market, but it's going to be very close with over 500 megabytes per second read speeds. So you put that together, you get really good reliability, you get really good price, and of course you get that great performance. This is going to be a great way to go. Great, huh? <laughs> That was bad. But anyway, it does come with a copy of Batman Arkham City as well as Norton Ghost. So get a little couple freebies in there. For 180 bucks, it's a great way to go. 128 gigabytes really isn't going to be enough though. So we're going to add a two terabyte Western Digital Caviar Green Drive. Now, this is a very simple drive. I have a pair of them in my computer. They work really well. They may not be the fastest thing in the world, but of course, the things that you really got to get at, your OS, your major programs, that kind of stuff, will go on the SSD. And for the main hard drive, you can put you know music, movies, pictures, maybe a couple Steam games, that kind of stuff that you're not going to need the super fast access to. It's going to be great. You have plenty of storage, and it's going to be a good drive for about 130 bucks. For power, we have the Corsair TX750 watt modular power supply. Now you actually have some choices here. So the one I've chosen, which is the 750 watt supply with modular capability, is great. However, if you don't really care about having a modular supply, you just want to have all the normal cables and try to route them around the case, you can save a few bucks. In fact, the non-modular supply is what I use in my array right now. However, on top of that, you can also go down a little bit. So 750 watts is a bit overkill for this machine. You should be able to get by with 650. So if you want to go ahead and bump the, uh, the watts down a little bit, you should be okay. However, having 750 watts, having that little bit of extra envelope for power and whatnot is good for upgrades as well as if you ever decide to rebuild your computer. 
Overall though, this is going to run you about 115 bucks, and of course less if you decide to get a non-modular supply or go down to a 650 watt supply. Moving on to the case, in this case, we're going to be using an Antec 302. So the 302 is a fantastic case which allows you to have lots of room for all your kinds of hard drives, graphics cards, that kind of thing. But it also gives you some really nice airflows to keep everything nice and cool. Now the original Antec 300 was a really, really well loved case. It had lots of room and all that kind of stuff. And the 302 is the newer version with USB 3 and some new improvements as far as airflow, all that kind of good stuff. However, this is definitely your choice. So the case is the thing that you're going to be looking at. You know, of course, all your parts are in there. But as far as the aesthetics go, the case is by far the most important step. So if you want a different case with perhaps a window, LEDs, that kind of stuff, absolutely feel free to go for it. However, if you're looking for something a little bit more understated, they're still going to get the job done in all other categories. The Antec 302 is great for about 70 bucks. Lastly, we have an Asus DVD burner. Now this one's optional. I know a lot of you guys really don't use optical drives anymore. However, it definitely can come in handy, especially if you're installing Windows or programs and all that kind of stuff. If you want, you can skip this one or you can upgrade to a Blu-ray drive depending on you know, how you use it. But overall, if you're looking for something really basic, for 20 bucks, this is a great addition to your build. So what's the damage? Well, as of filming this video, the entire price of the build is going to come to $1,496.90. However, definitely keep in mind that prices are constantly fluctuating, so by the time you watch this video, it may have gone up, down, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you know exactly what it is. I'll have links to all the parts in the description of this video. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.